Welcome to this video on hypothesis testing for S2. Now this one's all about the introduction to it and what it is. So hypothesis, you probably already have heard this word several times in science, certainly back at GCSE and before that even. And it's about, in statistics anyway, it's going to be about making a statement about the value of a population parameter. And what we can do is we can test a hypothesis about a population by carrying out an experiment or taking a sample. Now, remember that the result of the experiment or statistic that is calculated from the sample is called the test statistic. Now, in order to carry out the test, we form two hypotheses. The null hypothesis, which is what we assume to be correct, and the alternative hypotheses. And this is what would be correct should my original or your original null hypotheses be shown to be wrong. And when you come across, you know, say, things like an unbiased or a biased, I should say, a biased dice, and we're talking about, you know, it landed on a six. If I'm testing whether it is biased to land it on a six, the null hypothesis would be a probability of one over six, because that is what we would expect to happen. The alternative hypothesis, well, if we expect more sixes, the alternative hypothesis would then be greater than one sixth. If we expected actually less sixes, it would be less than one six. If we're not sure, then what we can do is we can do what's going to be called a two-tailed test, which I'll talk about a bit later, and that's where we test whether it could be greater than or less than. But before we get to that, let's start looking at some of the terminology. So the null hypothesis is H0. So that is our symbol for it. So if I use the example I mentioned about a dice, if I was looking at the probability of getting a 6, I'd write H0, my null hypothesis, probability equals 1, 6. The alternative hypothesis is H1. So again, if I thought that the dice was biased in favour of heads, my H1 would be the probability that, oh sorry, probability is greater than 1 sixth. And this is one of the key starting points on any hypothesis testing question. Now, as I mentioned just now, I will briefly talk about this, but we'll cover it more in later videos. But this is called a one-tailed test. Okay, so when I'm looking at one part of this, I'm only looking at one tail test. If I had a probability less than one six, this would also be a one tail test. And then if I'm not sure, but you know it could be uh, increase or decrease, but I'm not sure, so I do a one. I'm sorry, a probability does not equal. So this is known as a two tailed test. Now, in terms of the actual tests, we will talk about these in the next video. For now, what I want to focus on is just understanding the null hypotheses, the alternative hypotheses, and how to set those out. So let's look at this example. We have an election candidate believes he has the support of 35% of residents in his district. His campaign manager wants to test at the 5% significance level, whether the candidate is overestimating his support. The manager asks 25 people whether or not they support the candidate, four say that they support the candidate. Okay, so this 5% significance level is obviously quite important, as is this 35%. So we've got here 35%, that is what our null hypothesis should be. So that's my first step, you know, my null hypothesis is what I assume to be true. So 35% I'm going to write as a decimal, 0 0.35. Now, 
Now, if I go back and look at the question, 5% significance level, uh, I normally do make a little note of that. So I remember when I'm doing the question, because it's quite important. And then carrying on, we want to know whether he's overestimating his support. Now, if he is overestimating his support, the actual value will be less than 35%. So that's what our alternative hypotheses should be. We are looking at less than 35%. So what we're saying is we're basically going to test to see if this is true. If we can show that this is true, uh, then we would stick with it. But basically, if we can show that this is very unlikely, then this must be the correct value. And that's where the 5% significance level is. If it falls within that 5%, so, you know, essentially thinking of this being a 5% chance of happening, then what it would mean is that this must actually be the real value. Okay, and that's the kind of the basics behind this. Okay, you're testing what you think to be true. But if you show that this being true is very unlikely, then the alternative hypotheses must be true. Okay, and that value of very unlikely is set by the significance level within the question. So it could be 1%, 5%, 10%. Um, common is probably 5%, but often you will find 1%. And sometimes 10% in these questions. Um, and just while we're talking about the significance level, if I've got a two-tailed test, it's a total of 5%. So it would be 2.5%, 2.5% for either way, like above and below. So that's like a less than or a greater than. Okay. Anyway, let's get back into this question. Ah, I've just realised I've actually answered part B there, the uh, suitable hypotheses. So let's actually go back and do part A, write down a suitable test statistic. So it's quite simple. The statistic here would be the number of people who say they support the candidate. Now, Part C is the final bit, and that's where our four people come in here. So I'm just going to highlight the four people. So explain the condition under which the null hypotheses would be rejected. And it would be rejected if um, the probability of four or fewer people saying they support the candidate, that's just from the question, but four or fewer is less than 5%. Okay, that's what we're looking at. And if this was a question we were going to carry on and complete, we would be using the, you know, the values that we have here. So P is 35%, 0 0.35, N is 25, X is 4. And we'd be going to the binomial tables and looking at the value for X equals, or X is less than or equal to 4. And if that value turns out to be less than 5%, then we reject H0. If it's greater than 5%, um, we would accept H0. And that's the basics behind this. Now, I've given you just a couple of quick questions after this, just to practice getting the um, null hypotheses and the alternative hypotheses. Okay, it's just a short video today. Um, because what I want to do is, you know, essentially follow the textbook, but I think it's really important with hypothesis testing that we do break it up into each section as we go along. So this video is just on the null hypotheses and alternative hypotheses. 
in the next video we'll move on and start talking about critical values and critical regions and then we'll keep going on into one till two till tests and start bringing in poisson as well as binomial and then finally we'll look at uh, using our approximations like the normal approximation for an example okay so um if you found this video useful or you know any of my videos really please consider hitting that subscribe button it really does help me and obviously it'll help you guys find uh, the videos again if you don't need them now you might need them a little bit further down the line so there's that and uh, stay tuned there will be a few more videos coming out this week as I aim to get this hypothesis testing the whole series of videos over the next couple of days so catch you soon oh and don't forget the answers to the questions at the end of the video